Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I have coffee today. It's actually Sunday and I'm recording this and it's late. It's like eight something central time. For me, that's late. I usually am a pretty much a morning person, not today. And if you listened to my Sunday Morning Coffee podcast last week, you know that I got some stuff going on personally. A lot of people in a lot of places in my life are really struggling and going through some really hard times and things beyond our control, like physical health, like cancer, and just major changes. And in addition to that, other things are happening too. And so I, on the Sunday morning coffee podcast, I want to, I debated on not doing it this week. Today is February 27th, I think. Let me look at my calendar, 27th. Last Sunday morning coffee podcast in February and then we move into March. So I did wanna show up and talk with you. Also um, the week ahead, I am going to be going on a road trip. One of the changes that has been going on is I have a very close sister, my sister who I'm very, very close to, is moving right now. She lives about 20 minutes from my house and she's gonna move to the Pacific coast for a job. And so I'm gonna be doing a road trip. I'm gonna help her. She's gonna be driving down with a U-Haul and a car and I'm gonna be helping. So I'm gonna be doing a drive across the country this week. So my March is starting off driving. So I'm gonna get some books on audio and some great podcasts queued up and lots of time to think and drive. So that's what's coming ahead. So I'm not sure. Um, I think I will be posting. I know I'll be posting on Instagram, on Bridget Inspired Instagram. So you can follow me there because it's easy to post there. Super easy. Pictures and stuff, little videos and things. And then on Fairy Grasshopper, my YouTube channel, if I have opportunity, I will, once I get settled into um, her place, once she gets moved in a bit, um, we're going to go do some sightseeing around the area and I'll be by the water. So I'll be able to see, and I'll be by, um, yeah, I'll be by the water. So I'll be able to see it's not going to be hot though. It's not a hot state. I'll let you know when I, um, I think I want to keep that a little, hmm. I don't think I'll tell you exactly which state we're going to, but it's not California. Unfortunately. So that only leaves a couple others, doesn't it? So I think I'll try to do a live stream if I can. I think that'd be fun, right? Uh, Again, on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube. So let's do this Sunday morning coffee with Bridget today. We're going to start by this last bite. I I saved this last bite of key lime pie. I know it's not gluten-free. Yeah, not dairy-free either. Oh, well. It's good. So this, there's actually a little graham cracker crust and a little bit left of that key lime stuff. I'm gonna scrape that out. Mm. You got some of me? because I am having it for breakfast. So I'm gonna use my key lime pie as inspiration for Sunday morning coffee with Bridget today. This reminds me of Florida. As I am looking ahead to a road trip that to be super forthright with you, I am not, I'm not a fan of driving in general. Like three hours max. I've done a five hour trip by myself, fine. Barely made it, but I did. I have no idea what it's gonna be like to drive 12 hours in one day, we'll find out. And I'm just gonna try to be open. And yet I already, I have so much, I'm leaving my kids who are 
I mean, they're old enough to handle their stuff, but you know, their dad just went through the first round of chemo on Friday and it was intense. I mean, he's taken the biggest cocktail he can get. He has to, it has to be heavy duty so that he has a chance to have some life left with his kids and life left in general, right? Like he wants to have life, he wants to live, right? He wants to focus on living while he can. We all should be doing that in general anyway, okay? But the key lime pie reminds me of Florida and I did do a trip to Florida uh, this year. I have gone to Florida and I, I love it. You know, I love it. I love me Disney. I mean, that's my jam. It always makes me feel good and it does not disappoint and it did not disappoint. And yet, I always have key lime pie when I'm there and I, I didn't have any, like I looked for some and I don't think I had any, I don't think I had any, I'm feeling like I didn't have any. I'm pretty sure I didn't have any. I looked in my hotel and they didn't have any either. I'm pretty sure I did not have key lime pie when I was there. And so when I got home and I saw it, I, I had to have some, right? So I've had it like twice now, because <laughs> then, um, I got it brought home to me the other day too. So that was kind of nice. I was like, oh, what's this? Oh, it's for you. I'm like, oh my God, key lime pie. Thank you. <sighs> wow, that was a surprise. Anyway, so that's what I was eating this morning for breakfast. And because I can. Because I can do whatever the I want, right? Yeah, kind of feel like that right now. <laughs> Um, I love Florida, the warm weather, the palm trees, that feeling of, I have a sense of self when I'm there. It's the creativity and the beauty. I think the skies are gorgeous, the air, the humidity. I don't mind the showers, the rain and stuff. I don't mind that. I haven't lived there through a hurricane season or anything, but I just, there's something about it there I like. There's some things I really don't like, but it doesn't have anything to do with the climate or the land itself. Okay, okay. So key lime pie. It reminds me of sensory wise. It reminds me of Florida and I am sure that you have your own version of key lime pie for your life. So I'm gonna ask you to think about that. What is that? What is something that triggers you in a way that's healthy or enjoyable? Because so often we feel as though we are triggered by that which is negative or unfortunate or hurtful. We avoid triggers. We assume that when we get triggered, then we become uncomfortable and that's a bad thing, but the uncomfortableness is the growth space, the edges. And yet I want to bring into your awareness, our awareness, that things such as my key lime pie triggered me in a way that allows me to sensory, in, sen in a sensory way, it's so, like tangy, it's so like fresh. It feels like Florida. It feels like the way my spirit feels when I'm in that place. We also have things that can trigger us and invite us into, open us up into a, a feeling or a vibrational alignment with something that is good for us that feels alive and happy and real and authentic. And even if it's just a moment of having a bite of a pie, isn't that what life should be about? Key lime pie in my case, or the moments that bring us into a triggered event or experience, which brings me right back to standing and waiting for the Disney buses, like they have these shuttles that take you to different parks or places. And um, I didn't go into the theme parks, but I, uh, because I, I don't need to do that really. It was really busy. And at the time I was there, there was still a COVID stuff going on because it was early in the, the year here. And 
really early in the year. I don't usually go that early in the year, but I went really early this year. And it was hot, it felt good, it was warm. And it's just the sun while I'm waiting for the bus feels good. And the energy of the, God, I'm so itchy all of a sudden. My ears are itchy, my nose is itchy. I just, I love our sensory. What the heck, man? Oh, that's weird. Not really, we're talking about senses, right? And triggers and feelings and senses, our senses like taste, smell, touch, sound, physical body stuff can definitely bring us into a place that can seem triggered negative or triggered positive, right? So, or triggered afraid to deal with stuff or triggered invitation into beautiful moments of memory or of, it's not even memory because it's not that it's something that happened in the past, it's an awareness of an attachment that we might have that, or a desire that we might have, maybe desire is a better way to say it, or a alliance that we have a relationship, yeah, relationship that we might have with something like me in Florida, for example. So I go back to that moment and just feel that energy of that sunlight and just being out there near that parking, parking lot, and the air and sky and the trees, the foliage is so different and the gorgeous hotel looking up at it, big towers and it's pretty that. And I feel in that moment not designed by someone else or in a place where I'm coming to or from someone else's need, but just my own awareness of me in the environment. That's the best part for me, especially as a mom with like four kids and a lot of going on stuff going on. And then my sister moving and like, I'm the adult that helps her, right? I'm the adult in her life that she can, I mean, she's got great kids and stuff too, but I mean, I'm family, you know, so of course I'm going to go help her move and stuff. But I mean, timing's not fabulous, but it's not like it is what it is, right? And it's probably going to be really, really good for me to just be alone in the car and, or just with one other person with her. My niece is coming too, I think, to help drive. Yeah, she's coming too. So... You have a key lime pie. You have that too. And you have lots of those things. I have lots of those things too. Like um, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about, here's another example, a coffee mug. This is not one of my merch. I do have merch. You can look below and see the merch, but I have a merch that says hope or Sunday morning coffee or Gat spirit mugs. This one's joy. This is not mine. Um, I got this years ago when I went on a girls weekend um, and I got this one and I got one that said hope on it. Shocker, it said hope and it's green and it says hope. And that one is the one it broke, the handle broke because the kids would fight over who got to use it. Like it was a popular mug for hot chocolate when my kids were growing up. Cause this was like 10 years ago that I got these, okay. And they loved the hope one and everybody wanted that one. It was like a thing. And so now when I'm drinking out of this one this morning, I'm thinking about, especially one of my kids, my son who's at college right now, my oldest boy, and thinking about him and he's going through some stuff with a girlfriend stuff situation and he's dealing with that. And I've been, you know, being the mom listening to that, except not too much because, you know, it's mom and he's like in college and you don't want to tell me all that stuff because it's private, you know? And, but yet he wants, needs support. So we talk a little bit about it and stuff and trying to like, I gave him money to go out to dinner. I'm like, here, go out to dinner with your friends or whatever, go get pizza, just hang out with your friends, do that. And I was like, don't drink. Like he's gonna listen, he's not gonna listen. But I'm like, don't drink, just do this, go get pizza or something, you know? And uh, to just distract him from the intensity of not being able to be with this girl that he really cares deeply about. And I know he does, and he's so heartfelt and he's so in and it's just hard. But when I had this mug this morning, I thought about him and the hope mug. And that brings me into relation. So this thing brings me into relation. It brings a connection, it, it is a trigger. 
but it's not a trigger for pain or to heal something. It's a reminder of the connection of the relationship. Just like key lime pie is my reminder of my relationship with Florida, especially Disney, because the best key lime pie that I think I've had at Disney World has been at Wine Bar George in Disney Springs. They should, they should totally sponsor me, right, you guys? I really need to go back there like now, but I'm not going to, I can't. I'm gonna be gone for a week driving around then flying back. Actually, I get to see a really good friend of mine potentially that I haven't seen ever in person that I've known for like 10 years, who's really, really, really important to me and who I talk to multiple times a month. Um, and so I get to see her and we're going to meet and cause she's not that far from there. So I'm like, Oh my God, I'm excited about that. So there's some good stuff, you know, but also hard stuff. We can't let one or the other weigh us down too much. It can't, it can be so daunting. Yesterday I spent like an hour and it was cold and my fingertips were like really cold shoveling the driveway. It did not need to be shoveled really but I shoveled the big concrete pad and halfway into the gravel because I just felt good being outside and doing something physical because there were so many things that are beyond my control that I can do anything about. Emotionally, I can just worry about my kids and how they're handling their dad going through his chemo and you know, waiting for him to be really sick and he's gonna do this for six months and his first round went okay, I think so far. I mean, sick obviously, but not, I mean, he made it through it. So that's a really good thing because he doesn't have a lot of organs left inside his body to be able to process shit because he's been through a lot. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like you guys, I don't share all my personal stuff. I just don't. It's not appropriate to do that. And it's private for my children and for their dad, obviously my ex-husband, I'm not going to be like, well, here's all this stuff, but I care about it. Of course I do very much so. And I'm super hyper aware of the fact that if I was still married to him, how would this affect me also directly? At the same time, it's affecting my children. Now it's affecting my children. And he and I have had deep conversation or we've had conversation a couple of years ago when his, the cancer first appeared about his wishes for the kids and plans and things. And we just recently had that again because of this. So there is so much going on, you guys, and stuff with me inside me right now that I'm working on too, just in general, like, you know, you are having all these things too. All of these things are happening at once. And then the, and then the, the world and the crisis right now that's going on in Ukraine. I mean, there's so many things we can connect into, to feel into, to feel pressure from, to feel stress of. It's easy to feel bad. It's not, it's not the norm right now almost to feel good. And don't feel guilty for feeling good, even when there's horrible things happening in Ukraine or horrible things happening with your sister or horrible things happening with your neighbor or horrible things happening, like something bad's happened with your kids and you're trying to recover or whatever it is, whatever you're in the middle of or people that you love are in the middle of or midst of, we have to each trust that everyone can and will manage their emotion, their feeling, their experience in their own way. And we are there to support and to love, but not to take on that heaviness. And I do that. I do that over and over and over again. And part of that is because the psychic components for me makes it a whole different animal and it can be so crazy overwhelming. But yet we have to, myself included, we have to really look for the hope cups or the joy books or the key lime pies in our lives so that we can feel the energy of the connections that we have that are not in our face at that moment, but that are good and inspiring because we are good and we are inspiring. And we are also at the exact same time in pain and messy while we are doing a presentation all neat and professional and showing up. We're never broken. We are never broken. We are never, never broken. We just might be a little disconnected or out of alignment. So get yourself adjusted and tap in, tune in to the connections of the key line by, of the good. 
because it is here. It is right here just as much as the bad. And it has to happen at the same damn time. That is what duality is. That is what consciousness and humanity is. Human life experience and spiritual life experience, the connection is the energy of all of it. Learning to work with the energy of the thoughts and the feelings while you're in a body. That is what this life is about for me and for you. So be happy when you're sad, when you're grieving, when someone just died. Be happy when there is a tremendous amount of stress in your life and uncertainty. Find the moments for connection, for relationship with the good. It might be a smell. It might be an essence or a smell of a favorite oil. These are Emerald Temple oils. It might be that. It might be, yeah, that scent. It might be a favorite shirt, like weekend, I love you, my I love you shirt. It might be a sign, wait, which, right? Love, imagine, love. Oh, imagine the imagine sign. Let's just see. See that that actually says imagine. That's a hint as to who I channeled for tomorrow, which I channeled before the war stuff started. But I channeled somebody last week where imagine and imagine. This says imagine also. That's a hint. What an unusual Sunday morning coffee with Bridget, but at least there is one because I didn't think there would be because I'm like, what am I inspired by? What can I talk about? What's going to feel good? And I'm like, key lime pie for breakfast. That's what's going to feel good and coffee out of this joy cup. Yeah. All right, my friends, thank you so much for being here, here on Above Life Channel. I appreciate the ability to connect with you in the many ways that I do. And thank you for your patience. Although... Last week, I did not share a channeling, but I just couldn't do it. There was just too much. And that's okay. That has to be okay. That just has to be, right? Because sometimes you just can't, and it's all right. It's okay. Permission. Granted. Do you need a permission slip? I'll write you one. <laughs> but this week, you'll get one. And then the next week, too. Yeah, I have two ready. So that's good. So follow me on my journeys this week. Um, I'm leaving on Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday, the 2nd, March 2nd. I'll be leaving on my road trip. So you can follow me on Bridget Inspired Instagram. That's going to be the best way. I'll try to post on Facebook too, maybe on YouTube. If I'm on YouTube, it's going to definitely be at Fairy Grasshopper. So follow Fairy Grasshopper YouTube. And if I can, I will totally live stream because that would be cool. I don't know what it's going to be like driving through the mountains and stuff. So I'll we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Wish me luck. Anyway. Thanks for being here. I hope I've inspired your spirit, filled you with some hope. Find your key lime pie. And encourage you to live your life. This is your life after all. We are supposed to live it. When we're happy and we're sad, it's okay to be both at the same time. In fact, you should be. Maybe that's what we're trying to master here. Maybe that's the whole point of all this crap that's going on in the world and in your personal life. Maybe the whole point of it all is to manage, to, to recognize that they, they, it does coexist. The hate and the love co coexist. The, the sadness and the, the hardship coexists with the success and the love and the joy and the happiness. You can be happy and sad at the same damn time. So this is your life, my friend. This is your life. And I'm going to encourage you to do the best you can to live it. Just live it.